were there. And whenever the time came for Ethaniah to make an offering, he would give portions to Paniah, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he would give a double portion, for he loved Hannah. Wow. Although the Lord had closed her womb, and her rival also provoked her severely to make her miserable. But the Lord had closed her womb. The Lord closed her womb. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen? So it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord that she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Then Ethanar, her husband, said unto her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? And why is your heart grieved? Am I not better to you than ten sons? So Hannah rose after they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on the seat of the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Amen. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the afflictions of your maidservant and remember me, Amen. and not forget your man's maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. Yes. And no razor shall come upon his head. And it happened as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli watched her mouth. Now Hannah spoke in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said unto her, How long will you be drunk? Put away your wine from you. But Hannah answered and said, No, Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but I have poured out my soul before the Lord. Do not consider your maidservant a wicked woman, for out of the abundance of my complaint and my grief, I have Amen. spoken of Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant you the petition which you have asked him. Amen. And she said, Let your maidservant find favor in your sight. So the woman went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. No. Number 19, Then they rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord and returned and came to their house at Ramah in Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. So it came to pass in the process of time that Hannah conceived and bore a son and called his name Samuel, saying, because I have asked for him from the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Right. Thank you, Jesus. I didn't want to read all that, but I didn't want to miss anything. All right. I want you to get it all. And if you missed it, I'm reading from the New King, King James Version. Go read the whole chapter and, and read it again. Because I found some good information out of it. Now, Hannah was asking in faith. And Hannah is an excellent biblical example of asking in faith. Amen. Amen. Anybody have some faith in here today? Amen. <laughs> if you don't get anything today, besides the beautiful worship, I want you to increase your faith today. Amen. She had a married, she had a married, she had married a man named Elkanah, and so had someone else. Through the years, Elkanah's second wife, Panana, bore several sons and daughters to him, while Hannah remained barren. Hannah longed for a baby of her own. Wow. And finally, one year, Hannah went up to the doorway of the tabernacle and wept, and prayed to the Lord in great anguish, asking for a son and vowing to give him to the Lord. The Lord heard Hannah's request and answered it. Nine months later, she bore a son and named him Samuel who grew up to become the prophet and judge of Israel. Would Samuel have been born if Hannah had not asked God for a son? The Bible seems to answer no. Samuel appeared on the scene in direct response to Hannah's heartful request. Wow. <clears throat> Daniel 1 and 12. I, I, Daniel says, then he said unto me, Hannah, Hannah was praying, okay? But nobody could hear what she was praying. Okay, yearly they went up every year to pray and offer sacrifices and pray and ask God what, what they wanted. But Hannah was so, had a sorrowful spirit. She was grieved in her spirit because she didn't have any kids. Okay? And when Eli saw her praying, all he saw was lips moving. He thought she was drunk. drunk. Now in my, talk, my book, I talk about drunk. <laughs> When you're praying, don't always speak out loud. Speak within. Hallelujah. Amen. After Jesus.
Jesus came in the day of Pentecost, we got new tongues. We got a new English. We got a new way of praying. Everybody don't know what you're saying, but God does. Amen? Amen. It's a connection between you and God. But Hannah was like this. what she was praying. Yeah. Because so Hannah's name means favor. The root word is kanai. It means to bend. Well, well, well. To stoop in kindness to an inferior. I dare you to go and give a homeless person some money. The amount that God told you to give them. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It means to favor, to bestow, have mercy or have pity upon. That's what the root word of her name. Hallelujah, where you can just sit and talk and meditate with the word, with the Lord, and meditate on the word, hallelujah, and how he's going to do it for you, how he's going to bless you, how he's going to bring that baby forth, and guess what, he brought forth Samuel, and his name means heard of God, wow. hallelujah, Hannah made a vow, she made a promise to God that if you bless me, Lord, with a man child, I'm going to give it back to you. Some of us can't trust the daycare with our baby for eight hours. <laughs> but she trusts God with Samuel for life. Amen. After she waited. Now I can see why Hagar had to go through what he, she had to go through. And I see that Sarah, the, you know, she was the handmaid. And I can go there where she was the handmaid and Sarah, you know, took her into her husband to bear a blessing. Yeah. It wasn't a promise. It was a blessing. Yeah. But it kind of troubled my spirit a little bit because I want y'all to, this is what I tell the people when I get up into any pulpit or any time I speak. My words might be rough, but just put on your seatbelt and just hold on. If it get bumpy, just say ouch. Yeah. Because my ministry is called changing you from the inside out. And when I look at what Hagar came from, I'm like, how can I put it so pretty for Hagar? Well. Because Hagar, we're going to do a little history. And I was doing a little bit more studying because I said, God, you got to give me something pretty on Hagar. Yes, he heard, he heard her cry in the wilderness. But she also told him that your son going to be a wild man. Well. His hands are going to be on other people. Yeah. And he... Other people's hands are going to be after him. We are suffering it today in Iraq. Okay. Hagar's name was uncertain, one who seek refuge. Okay. I had to study and find out that she was uh, placed in the, uh, the Abrahamic religion. She also came from Egypt. So she had other gods. She understood other gods. If I can give you any message today, it's, we'll call this relationship, God chooses relationship over conflict. God chooses relationship over conflict. When I was reading the story about her and how she in Genesis, give me a second, Genesis 16, and four, and how, I'm waiting for it to come up on my tablet, but how Sarah brought in, brought her in to, you know, impregnate, for um, Abram to impregnate her. Now, let, let me give you a little breakdown. I, I break down because I did, one time I did a conference, and we talked about the lineage of sin. And we talked about the old mindset and before Abram and Sarai was they were they were told they were chosen. They had a prom a promise over them. But sometimes when we bring the old things in, remember Hagar was in Egypt and this was her handmaid. And they brought her in and other things. And I think I preached a word one time about Lot. We like to bring a lot of stuff with us. Because he said, leave your descendants behind. Leave all that stuff behind. But sometimes we can bring in some stuff that God has not told us to bring it in with us. Amen. Okay. 
Like I said, it will get bumpy because I'm gonna I'm gonna touch on sister and and I respect the woman of God. I respect Hagar, but remember, like I said, she served all the gods. When I looked her up, I didn't see her. I saw I saw her in the Quran. How they worship her in the Quran. So I'm like God. What can I say about this woman of God? And all I heard was relationship over conflict. Because I can say that sometimes us women, we do some things that we're desperate in and we, we tear up some relationships. We don't want to submit under some stuff. We don't want to submit under our husbands. We don't want to submit under the things that God has called us to do. And sometimes conflicts can come inside. So when we see things come in and coming in like a flood and we want God to lift up a standard against it. I told a young lady before I got here, I said, baby, I know you going through some stuff. But what I want you to know, I want you to look into what is it that you opened up the door for? What was the door opened up for? It says in 16.4, when Hagar got pregnant, she despised Sarah. Mm. Mm. Okay. That's your hand, baby. But she now despised it. She got pregnant and she has a seed in her. I want you to listen to this. You got a seed growing, so whatever you plant is going to grow. It's going to grow. Mm -hmm. So now some conflict is coming in. Mm -hmm. But where the relationship was to bless your handmaiden. But I thought about it. I said, God, did she really agree to do this or was she forced to do it? Then you think about it. Was there some bitterness already put in there that now we're seeing the seed from today? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm very transparent. I have a seed that was planted. And I'm very open. And I said that, you know, I came from prostitution and my daughter was a prostitution baby. So when I see where she's at, I got to repent for the seed. Yeah. Because I know that seed could be turned around. Because yeah. if God could turn me around, yeah. he would turn her around. Yeah. And I stand on his word every day yeah. of what he said. Yeah. So, okay, I got it up. In 16, uh, chapter, that's Genesis 16 and 4. So Abraham had sexual relations with, I'm, work, I'm reading in the New Living Translation. Abraham said sexual relations with Hagar. And she became pregnant. But when Hagar knew she was pregnant, she, she began to treat her mistress Sarai with contempt. Then Sarai said to Abram, this is all your fault. Mm, mm, mm. Can, we, can we stop there? Okay. How many times we put our foot in something? And we now want to blame somebody. Okay, this is all your fault. I, and, and, and the word sounds pretty familiar because it's making me go back to thinking about what Adam said about Eve. He was the woman who did it. So everybody want to play the blame, the blame game. It ain't no man, ain't no woman. We all got the same game we play. It's that woman you gave me. It's all your fault, Abel. That this happened, I put my maid servant into your hands. But now that she is pregnant, she treat me with contempt. The Lord will show show who's wrong, you or me. Mm. <laughs> okay, we, we we ain't gonna touch on that. <laughs> Abram replied, "Look, she is your servant. So deal with her as you see." Then Sarai treated Hagar harshly, that she finally ran away. Yeah. Okay, we're going to elaborate on that. She treated her harshly. Now this woman did not ask for this. But now, again, I'm, I'm 
talking about the seed, the mindset. Because if we go into the lineage, it was after the flood, God was looking for a certain type of people to carry on the name. So he chose Abram and Sarah Amen. lineage to carry it on. Yes, yes. But because we were chosen, it doesn't mean that what we left behind can't follow us sometimes. Amen. What we do can't follow us sometimes. Because there's a breakdown when Sarah was barren, you know, at the time she was barren. Now, she had Isaac, and Isaac now goes to Rebecca, and Rebecca is barren. Rebecca come out of that same lineage of the mindset before their names was changed. If you notice that the, the blessing was given before the name changed. Isaac was given after the name changed. So the mind had to change. But now I want to deal with this person because of my imperfections. Because I am going through something, I'm going to put you out. I don't care what gods you want to serve. If I'm going to walk with the God I say I walk, my continent should be different. I should be standing up looking a certain way. So how is it that this handmaid that knows other gods going to respect something like this? Of course the woman is going to be bitter. Of course the woman is going to say, I will even say because you are sitting, you are looking at somebody was a Rasta and my ex-husband was a Muslim. Yeah, we served other gods and I wouldn't even tell you of the other gods I served. So when I saw the way the church people treated me, when I came into God and they said that this is a God we say and God is a good God. Yes, he is, but you're going to treat me different. Amen. I question too. They're God. But God said, I didn't change you for them. I changed you for me. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and, and can I be real with y'all? Y'all, y'all, can I take it? Mm -hmm. I was brought up in witchcraft. So when we when we wanted to do our little things, see that's why I don't play with God. Well, well, well. I don't play with that blood. On, because I know the devil is real. Right. When we used to go ahead and use the Bible, we used the Old Testament to do our witchcraft. When we needed something, we knew how to conjure up different things. But now that I'm serving the God I know, I am here on assignment to let you know, build your relationship with God. Know who God is. Because like the woman of God said, who's there? Mm. I was telling the young lady, like I said, I, when I came here, baby, when you open the door, I'm here. You see these hands, they got to be clean. I can't go back. I can't dip, slip. I can't do it. Because I've crossed over to another side. 